And to help us with recent changes to the Employment Standards Act, we have Karen Brownrigg joining us on the show one more time. Uh, she's the founder and CEO of IHR Advisory Services. Karen, great to have you here. Thank you. Been a busy time for you and your, uh, it has been. your team. It has Can you been. quickly tell us about uh, IHR Advisory Services, what sure. you're all about? We're an HR consulting firm and businesses outsource all or portions of their HR to us. Okay, and you haven't been around for very long, your organization. No, no it's been two years now. A couple of years. Where are you based out of? We're located on Concourse Gate, which is in the uh, Colonnade Business Park. Okay, so there's been some recent changes and you're hearing about this in the news all over the place. So what exactly is going on when it comes to, uh, to the Employment Standards Act? Well, as of yesterday, employers need to be assuring themselves and their employees that they're paying people regardless of their employment status. So employment status means full-time, part-time, casual, temporary employees. So you can't differentiate their pay based on their employment status. Okay, so people aren't getting paid? Is that what's going on? or? People may be getting paid a different rate of pay for hmm. working part-time and doing the same type of work as a full-time employee in that place of work. Okay, so that's not good. No, that's not good. That's, that's a terrible thing. Okay, yeah. so, so um, how, how does this impact, impact rather employers, uh, what's happening with all these changes? Like, are, are, they, are, are some employers in big trouble now because they haven't been doing this? Well, the Ministry of Labour has hired an additional 175 labour inspectors to go into places of employment to see if employers are compliant. And if they're found not to be compliant, they may be facing a fine of up to $1,500 per mm. incident. And what employers really need to be focusing on, because the Ministry of Labour inspectors are there to educate, and they're not there to fine on the first crack. But employers do need to be looking at the rates of pay that they're paying their employees based on the type of work that the employees are doing. And the, if the employee is exerting the same amount of, uh, of effort, they're, they're, they're required to have the same level of skill and knowledge and they're working in the same location of work, mm -hmm. then the employer should be paying the employee based on the type of work that they're doing and not their employment status. Okay, can, can I ask you why these changes came into effect? I mean, was it, was it a gigantic problem? Yes, yeah, yeah, I think, and not because anybody had any malintent necessarily, but because uh, employees who are coming in on a casual basis or on a part-time basis oftentimes don't have the same level of experience as uh, a full-time employee. And so uh, given that, then employers often pay a different rate of pay. But employers get busy, they lose track of what, what the employees are making in their workplace, and they're not kind of going back and doing a recheck and saying, all right, for this particular job, we're paying uh, an employee who's in a developmental stage of, of that particular type of work mm -hmm. a certain rate of pay, a fully functional employee a different rate of pay, and then an employee who's mastered the skill level a different rate of pay. They're not going back and reevaluating that necessarily, and so then that gets a little out of line and there's some inequities that happen in the workplace. Okay. What is the difference between this and also, so the Pay Transparency Act mm -hmm. is, is also coming, coming into play, or, or that's been around for... That's been proposed in March. It's been proposed. And if it does come into play, it will come into play effective January 1st, 2019. And what that means is employers now, many employers have what's referred to as a closed compensation system. So they don't reveal the rates of pay that they assign to the different jobs in the workplace. If that comes into play in 2019, then employers will be forced to reveal all of the pay scales that they have for the different types of jobs and what they're paying employees in their workplace. If they're posting a job, for instance, they'll have to be posting the salary ranges and Oftentimes, employers who are doing telephone screening will say to the employees, so, you know, what are your salary expectations? They won't be able to do that if that comes into play. Hmm. Okay, so, so what is your team doing then to support uh, employers to make sure that everything is, is the way it should be? We do salary surveys, so you pay the job, not the person. You reward the person for merit, for performance, and so on. Um, we'll do salary survey. We help the employers uh, assign rates of pay to the jobs and the job families in the organization. And we also help them set measurable targets to reward for performance as opposed to differentiating the salary based on performance that is not aligning with the types of jobs in their workplace. Okay. So is it in an employer's best interest then to contact 
a person such as yourself to make sure that everything is, is on the straight and narrow, they don't have to worry about being fined or getting in trouble? Of course. The, the business owners are there to run their businesses. They shouldn't have to worry about uh, understanding all of the different types of compensation strategies that are out there. That's what we specialize in and we take care of that for them so that they can be assured that they're complying with these uh, pay, pay equity uh, requirements. Okay, so, so just to make it clear, so the, the changes have been put in place, but is there like a grace period where like... They were effective yesterday. Okay. And the Ministry of Labor inspectors, of course, are going to be understanding that employers aren't necessarily aware of all of the intricacies associated with ensuring that they're compliant. So employers will be given a notice if they are inspected to uh, to ensure that they have those uh, those programs in place. So All right. they're short they're short short notices, but there's a little bit of time for them. Okay, but still, let's get that figured out, and mm -hmm. so employees can get the proper rates as well. Yes. All right, <laughs> Karen Brownrigg, founder and CEO of IHR Advisory Services. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Dylan. Appreciate it. More daytime coming up in moments. Nabil the Thrill Khatib joins us. We'll find out why next.